Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my November 2023 reading wrapper. Dane reads. So I just have the one book to share with you today. That is Shepherd's Delight by Charles Heathcote, our very own Charlie Heathcote here on YouTube. These are poems on identity and discovering oneself, especially as the son of a farmer who is a vegetarian and who has no interest in kind of getting into the family business. Uh, the blurb is short and sweet, so I can read it here. Rural landscapes and the mythology of his family's farming background are themes explored in this first collection of poetry from Charles Heathcote. Um, it's mostly non-rhyming. There are one or two poems that do have rhyming elements to them, but mostly free verse and uh, very sort of autobiographical. Charlie sent this to me as well, so I think I should uh, should explain that too. But uh, overall, really enjoyed it. A strong four out of five from me. Um, it's the kind of poetry I like to read, um, even if it is occasionally a bit tough reading about some of the things that happen to animals because, you know, I'm vegan. I don't, I don't do farming unless it's avocado farming. So good job, Charlie. All right, you folks. Well, I have a lot of books to uh, talk to you about. I'm also using this in my reading vlog. Um, if you're watching my reading vlog, you know why. Um, basically, because there's a lot of books to talk about. We're going to start with, oh, most of these are going to have reviews as well. So uh, links below, I guess, if I remember to to set them. Well, I probably won't because the, they probably won't be, uh, they probably won't be uploaded by then. Anyway, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So um, I've read quite a few Matt Haig books at this point. Um, I really enjoy his writing style, his ideas. The idea behind The Midnight Library, basically there's a main character in it who isn't too happy with her life and she's wondering what would have happened if things had turned out differently, as we all do, I think. Um, well, it's not even that. Basically, she's just incredibly depressed, so she quote-unquote unalives herself because um, we can't say the real word on YouTube, apparently. And, um, yeah, instead of dying, she sort of ends up in the in-between in this kind of um, limbo, which is takes the form of this midnight library. Um, and she can look at her book of regrets, to look at all the things that she's regretted in her life, and she can make different decisions and see how things turned out. Um, I do think the ending of it was fairly predictable, but overall the writing was beautiful. Um, it was a very clever book, you know. I gave it a, a strong 4 out of 5, would definitely recommend. Then I read, oh I don't actually have a physical copy of this, I read Oz the Planing in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, which is the last of the Ruth Plumley Thompson uh, Wizard of Oz books. I gave this one like a 3 out of 5, it wasn't particularly good. It's um, actually, basically it came out the year that the Wizard of Oz movie came out and uh, you can tell it's more of like a commercial cash grab than a, a serious attempt at, you know, building the Oz legacy if such a thing even exists. Um, and uh, yeah, it was okay, but basically the point of it is that there's um, uh, uh, an aeroplane. The Wizard of Oz has created an aeroplane, and we um, we see what happens when he, he goes flying through the skies. Uh, then I read... Um, what did I read? Okay, then I read All the Discworlds are Stage by Terry Pratchett, adapted by Stephen Briggs, and this is play versions of Feet of Clay, which is my first ever Discworld novel that I read. The Rinse Cycle, which is mostly based on uh, The Light Fantastic, but with bits of The Colour of Magic and Sorcery in there as well. And then Unseen Academicals, which is based on Unseen Academicals. Three different Discworld plays. I've never read any of the Discworld plays before. I've never seen them uh, performed, so it was really nice for me to kind of re-familiarise myself with the Discworld. It was nice because I've read all of the Discworld books, but it kind of felt like experiencing them for the first time, um, which, you know, now that alas Terry Pratchett is no longer with us, I don't know, it, it just was very moving because of that. So I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 and I would love to see these performed live. Then I read Melted Into Air by Sandy Toxvig. So Sandy Toxvig is a TV presenter. Uh, she does some radio stuff as well. I guess she's worked in the theatre. Uh, I previously read um, Hitler's Canary, which was, I guess, like, you would call it, like, maybe a young adult book, maybe even a middle grade book, uh, aimed at younger readers anyway, um, based on what her parents did in Denmark during the uh, Second World War. This one is just very different. This one is kind of a contemporary, almost romance novel. Um, basically, a woman in her middle ages who works as a theatre producer, she's kind of just feeling a little bit down and out. Um, she was in a relationship that, that you know, went tits up um, for various reasons. And she just doesn't really know what she's doing with her life. So her cousin, I think it is. Uh, anyway, somebody she, she she's related to them, but she also works with them in the theatre production. Um, and it, they arrange for her to go off to Italy, where basically she has a dark incident in her past. Um, it's all to do with religion, and basically 
set in a very religious part of Italy with um, kids pretending that they have had a vision of um, you know like a saint or whatever and the ensuing uh, havoc that that causes don't mind me i'm just picking the stickers off the front of it while i talk to you guys um so it was very interesting it wasn't the normal kind of thing that i would read um and i don't think i even would have stuck with it if it hadn't been written by sandy toxvig but it certainly was well written um funnily enough i was thinking that it's the kind of book that Charlie, Charles Heathcote should read um, because A, I imagine that he likes Sandy Toxvig. There's something about Charlie that makes me think he probably likes her. Um, but B, because it's set in Italy, there's a lot of stuff about Italian culture, lots of bits of Italian language, and Charlie is studying Italian. Um, so I just like, think it'd be quite nice from that point of view. Um, but yeah, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Um, some bits were better than others, but you know, it kept me reading. Then I read Life on Air by David Attenborough, and I do not have the book for this. Well, I do, but it's downstairs. But I actually listened to the audiobook of this, which was narrated by Attenborough himself. It's basically his memoirs of broadcasting. And that, to me, was particularly interesting because um, I've read some of his non-fiction stuff before, but it's all been like his Zoo Quest books or, you know, The Life of Plants, whatever it is. Because um, he has a lot of naturalist books that are, are based upon his you know his work that he done, does as a, a presenter in sort of nature shows biological um you know biology shows i guess you call them like natural animals and stuff um so i've read a lot of his non-fiction and weirdly basically most of his books came about because he was sent to do a documentary for the bbc or whatever and while he was there he wrote a book so it was really kind of interesting going through his uh, memoirs and seeing how like all these different projects came about and um, you know relating them back to I've not necessarily seen the the shows but I have read the books you know so that was really cool and it just kind of gave me a new insight into why Attenborough is such a national treasure uh, very well deserved the other thing I would say as well is it was interesting because this was in the early days of television you know when he got his first TV job he didn't, he didn't own a TV. He had seen some TV at his wife's parents' house, but he himself didn't own a TV. Everything was black and white. Um, they had no way of recording shows, so most shows happened live, but then they couldn't record them. So rather than, let's say they had a, you know, a telly play or whatever, rather than you know record the one performance and air that twice, they would just do two different performance of it, uh, performances of it. So it's all kind of really interesting to learn that side of things. Overall, I gave it a strong four out of five, especially with the uh, audiobook because it was narrated by Amber himself. Okay, then we have uh, Come Again by Robert Webb, and weirdly, this is kind of like the Midnight Library. The plot of this is there's a woman called Kate. Um, she's kind of grieving because her husband of 25 or so years has passed away from like a, a brain tumor that neither of them knew that he had until it was too late. Um, she's kind of spiraling into despair. And then one night she sort of she's pretty much doing the same thing she's trying to kill herself she you know she's drinking herself into oblivion um with the deliberate aim of ending her own life and she wakes up in her past um back at her first day of university and she kind of gets to see what could have happened if things were different and she learns that because she herself is different you know she's a um you know middle-aged woman in an, an 18 year old's body the relationship doesn't quite develop the same way as it did before. As it did before, her um, husband was actually a bit of a knob when he was young, and sure, you know, she loved him, but it was only after years of building him into a better person, you know. And we start to think, well, maybe she ended up with the wrong person. There's also another kind of side story going alongside it, which relates to like deep fakes and AI, which is really interesting. And in, you know, given the society we live in today, um, and so yeah, it was overall it was a really interesting read. Uh, it's by Robert Webb, who is one half of Mitchell and Webb. He was in Peep Show uh, and that Mitchell and Webb look, which are two of my favourite comedies. And um, yeah, it was interesting to see there were bits of comedy, but there were also some serious bits to it. It's one of those books where. It asks you questions as a reader, but it doesn't do that at the expense of having a good plot at the same time, you know? Uh, and then I read, and I don't have it over here, I'll tell you what I can show you. I read um, Death's Domain by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs, I think it was. Was it Stephen Briggs or did he do it with someone else? Can't remember. But basically, uh, it's one of the Discworld maps. So I've take, actually taken the map out of the book here because I'm going to frame it and put it on my wall. So this is Death's Domain. This is what um, Death's Domain looks like. And uh, yeah, it came with like a little book as well that sort of talks about all of the different aspects of Death's Domain. It's just one of Pratchett's Discworld map things. He did one for Ank Morpork as well. Um, again, I'm, I'm slowly but surely ticking my way off through the last few Pratchett things that I haven't read. 
and this was one of them. Uh, probably like a 3.5 out of 5. And the same for Come Again. Maybe a 4 out of 5, but probably a 3.5 out of 5. And uh, that is me now up to date. So now I've got to film my reviews. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. I read uh, This Much Is True by Miriam Margulies. Marg Margulies. I actually don't know how to say her surname. For ages I thought it was uh, Miriam Margoyles. And it turns out I was wrong. Um, but yes, a very humorous and enjoyable memoir. But very like frank as well. Um, it's one of those where... I mean, I enjoyed it just for the sake of reading it. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest fan of hers. Um, I enjoy her when I've seen her in stuff, and you know, I, I un understand why she's considered a national treasure and all of that. But actually, for me, it was mostly enjoyable just as the story of a life, not necessarily as the story of her life. Um, I did enjoy it, as I say. Um, but yes. What more can I say? It was just an interesting little uh, autobiography. Um, as interesting as any autobiography is, I suppose. Um, so yes, I gave it probably, probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. Alrighty guys, I just have two books to wrap up for you today. The first of them is this one, which is The Thief by Ruth Rendell. So this is one of the quick reads, um, which is like an initiative, I guess, by World Book Day. Um, this was published by Random House. I'm just going to try and pick this label off while I talk to you guys. Um, basically, the idea behind the quick reads campaign was to make very cheaply available books uh, so that to encourage more people to read. Um, this is... I mean, it's billed as a novella, but it's not. It's a short story, really, about... Um, about a woman who, she's an, an habitual liar, and um, whenever she feels like someone's wronged her, she takes something that like belongs to them and destroys it. So like when she was a kid, she stole somebody's watch and smashed it up and threw the, piece, the, the pieces down a gutter and stuff like that. Um, she shredded up somebody's, I think it was her aunt's novel that she was reading because her aunt was mean to her. So um, yeah, she, that's what she does. And then one day she kind of gets bites off more than she can chew. Um, she's a very unlikable character, but she does get her comeuppance. So um, I did enjoy that because of that. And uh, overall, it was an okay little read. Um, yeah, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was my introduction to uh, Ruth Rendell, as I've not read any of her stuff before. And as I say, it was it was all right. Um, and then I read The Yeag Letters by William S. Burroughs and Allen Ginsberg. Now, technically it should be The Yahe Letters, because that's how it's pronounced. It's uh, what we now call Ayahuasca. Um, but basically Burroughs, I guess, didn't realise that. So he, he, or he anglicised the Spanish or whatever. So it, it is the Yeag letters with how it's pre uh, presented there. Um, the thing, fun thing about this, it's been through so many different iterations. Um, you know, everyone has kind of read a different version of it. I really liked the introduction that was a part of this. It was written by, um, what was it? What was his name? Oliver Harris. Um, a really interesting int introduction that she talked about all of the different editions that came out, how this was actually published, uh, all of that good stuff. That was, if anything, more interesting than the actual rest of the book itself. But yeah, it's kind of an epistolary novel. It's part fiction, part fact um, about the search for the for the search for ayahuasca, basically. Um, I would give it a four out of five because I do love Burroughs and Ginsberg. Um, but as I say, weirdly, it was that introduction. It's one. Of, I think maybe the only time I can think of where the introduction to the book has been more interesting than the book itself. So um, yeah, make of that as you will. But yeah, four out of five. Alrighty, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins, the author of The Hunger Games. Uh, this is like middle grade portal fantasy it's it's pretty generic to be honest it reminds me i've read a ton of stuff like this just by indie authors um it just read like an indie author's first book that they wrote to entertain their kids you know um definitely didn't have the same magic as the hunger games um tar target's a totally different target audience as well to be fair but it just it just wasn't really for me i gave it like a three out of five i do have books two three and four as well so i guess i will be reading those soon but i don't have particularly high hopes for them um we will see it, it, it was it was fine i suppose it just wasn't anything special Alrighty guys, just the two books to update you on today. Um, the first of these I read on the treadmill at the gym. This is the 2015 Discworld Diary by Terry Pratchett, aided and abetted by the Discworld Emporium. So this is literally a diary that you can use to plan your your year, the, the year of 2015. Um, but as you can see, it does have its fair little share of writing in it as well. Um, the theme of this one, it's all around the Igors, 
who um, are very much like the kind of classic ego that you get in like horror fiction and whatnot. Uh, in the disc world, it's the ego's job to go around and you know patch people up who have you know had industrial accidents, should we say? Uh, it was a lot of fun. It only took like 20 minutes or so to read, but it's definitely one I would recommend reading if you're a die-hard Discworld fan, uh, such as I am. In fact, I've got my Death of Rats tattoo there. Um, and then I read, oh, so that was like a four out of five. And then I read Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I actually read this via the audio book. Um, it was okay. So I, I read this because of, you know, it's obviously a very hyped book, very popular. And um, because I'm a writer, I feel like I should read these things to get to know the books that people really like and um, figure out, I guess, why they like them and what I can learn from them. Um, it was just okay, as I say. Um, it was very tropey. I think it actually helped to establish a lot of the tropes that we now kind of know and love from uh, YA. Yeah, I would give it like a week 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series. I might do. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting from it, but I, I feel like it didn't really deliver. I don't feel like it didn't really deliver anything. Um, yeah, it wasn't like when I read The Hunger Games and it blew my mind, put it that way. So yes, 3.5 out of 5, but a weekie. Alrighty guys, three more books to wrap up for you. One of them I've taken downstairs. It is The Pratchett Portfolio by Terry Pratchett. And it's basically, um, it was published in like the mid, mid to late 90s, I think, so fairly early on in the Discworld. And it's a bunch of illustrations of the various Discworld characters, along with some written bios of what makes them tick and what they're all about. Definitely a must read if you're a Discworld fan. I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it a four out of five, even though it was short and sweet. And then I read two more of the Underland Chronicles books by uh, Suzanne Collins. So I read Gregor and the Prophecy of Bane and Gregor and the Curse of the Warmbloods. Basically, each one of the, these is fairly formulaic. It's uh, portal fantasy, middle grade portal grade, uh, middle grade portal fantasy. Basically, this guy called Gregor lives in New York. He goes to the Underland where there are like giant talking animals and people ride on bats and stuff. Um, and there are prophecies for each book that involve him and um, he goes on some sort of journey. That's pretty much it. Um, I will say The Prophecy of Bane, the second one, I thought was quite good. Um, maybe because by that point the world was already kind of well established and stuff. Um, but then it went back downhill a bit again with Curse of the Warm Bloods, although that is about a plague, so that's quite good. Um, but I gave Prophecy of Bane a 3.5 out of 5, Curse of the Warm Bloods a 3 out of 5. I am still going to keep reading this series just because it's so easily digestible you know i mean i read the entirety of prophecy of bane in um the waiting room at wickham hospital while i was in the minor injuries unit getting my face looked at because i have an infection up here which is why i'm sounding weird um but yes make of that as you will they were all right i am probably going to be doing a review of all of these gregor books by the way um but i don't i mean you can see i don't have a huge amount tabbed out in them so i'm probably going to lump them all together i don't know Anyway, those are all of the books that I read in the month of November 2023. So as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of these books. If you've read them, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.